Daisy Merrill that the library is full of dirt. Join us this summer as we get the dirt, discovering interesting reading trips. There will be shows about pets, music, monster trucks, and more. Today's Get the Dirt is another episode about pets. Do you remember the last time when we got the dirt on pets? I showed you my Garami. Yes, yeah, she is one of my pet fish, and her name is Jewel. Do you remember the clues I gave you about this week's pet? Let's see. Had to be self-sustaining, which means it's able to be left alone for a few days, as long as it has plenty of food and water. My pets are the ones that I rescued, meaning they needed to find a new home. And my new clue was that it was a mammal. Oh, and they did not get in the dirt, so when my pets came my way, I was ready. Or so I thought. Before I introduce today's pets, let's read a book about a girl named Annie and her cousin Henry. Henry loved his dog Mudge, and felt sad Annie didn't have a pet of her own. The book is called Henry and Mudge, and Annie's Perfect Pet. The author, the one who wrote the words, is Cynthia Rylett. The illustrator, the one who drew the pictures, is Susie Stevenson. You can find this book in the easy section under R for Rylett, because this book is part of the Henry and Mudge series. You may find all the Henry and Mudge books all together in one section of your, your library. If you can't find it under the R for Rylett, be sure to get the dirt from your local librarian. As we read this fictional story, see if you can follow some of the clues I left earlier to figure out what our special guest is today. Henry and Mudge and Annie's Perfect Pet. Henry and Henry's big dog, Mudge, always visited cousin Annie next door. Annie used to live far away. Henry didn't see much of her. But now she lived next door, and it was fun. Henry and Annie rode bikes, played frisbee, and traded comics. Then, of course, they petted Mudge. Annie loved Mudge. She loved his soft eyes, his warm nose, his big paws. Annie wished she had a dog. But her father was at work every day. No one would be home to take care of a dog. Henry felt very sorry for Annie. He remembered how much fun it was to get a new pet. Mudge had been the cutest puppy. He was all round and rolly and very small. Henry could pick him up and kiss him. And you sure couldn't do that now. And Mudge was so, so short, he could walk under the collie down the street. Not anymore. Henry wanted Annie to have her own pet. He went to his parents' house for help. Maybe she could get a mouse, said Henry's father. Annie's afraid of mice, said Henry. What about a turtle, said Henry's mother. Too wet for Annie. A crab, said his father. Too hard, said Henry. A bird, said his mother. It might fly into Annie's teacups, he said. Okay, said Henry's father. Annie needs a pet that isn't scary, isn't wet, isn't hard, doesn't fly, and tap dances. Tap dances, Henry giggled. I just threw that one in, said Hen Henry's dad. Henry's mother was thinking, I know, she said. A bunny. It's soft and dry and doesn't fly, and it doesn't have to be walked like a dog, said Henry. Yes, said Henry's mother, but can it dance? Henry and Henry's parents and Henry's big dog Mutch took Annie to the pet store. When they went inside, birds were singing, puppies were barking, kittens were meowing, and mice were squeaking. But the bunnies in the corner were being quiet, quiet and careful, just like Annie. Perfect, said Henry's mother. Annie picked up a white bunny, baby bunny. She had soft eyes, just like Mudge. She had a warm nose, just like Mudge. And she had something Mudge didn't, a little cotton tail. She's so cute, said Annie with a smile. Mudge put his warm nose up to the bunny's warm nose. The bunny sniffed, sniffed, sniffed. She seemed to like Mudge. When Mudge gave her a big, drooly kiss, she didn't even mind. Henry looked at his parents. We found Annie's perfect pet, he said. We took the bunny home. Henry's Uncle Ed made a beautiful hutch for Henry and his bunny. It was painted with flowers and trees. It had a little china bowl for the bunny to eat from and soft bits of cotton for the bunny to sleep on. It fit Annie's room perfectly. Annie had named her bunny Snowball. She played with her and sang to her and took her to Henry's house. The bunny liked Henry's house. She liked riding on Mudge's back. She 
Much carried the bunny all around. And when he got tired, they stopped for crackers. Annie was so happy to have a pet, a pet just right for her. I love my bunny, Annie told Henry. I know, Henry said. She's soft and dry and doesn't fly. Do you have a guess what today's pet is? Let's see. Self-sustaining. One that might have needed a new home. A mammal. Yes, a rabbit. This is Enigma. Enigma and his sisters needed a new home. A rabbit was my number one pet choice because rabbits are self-sustaining, cuddly, and they are so cute. My final clue for today's pet was that it was a mammal, and rabbits are mammals. Mammals are animals that have hair or fur. Let me see. He looks like he has fur. Do you agree? Mammals are warm-blooded. He does adjust to the seasons. Mammals give birth to babies, and they look like them, but smaller. Well, I didn't see Enigma born, or when he was super little, but I did see him as a baby, and he looked like a smaller version of me himself. Mammals have vertebrae. Here's his backbone. Mammals have lungs to breathe air. You can't see his lungs, but you can see him breathing, especially when he pants. Enigma and his sisters are Flemish giant Rex mixes. My first choice for rabbit was the dwarf breed that I hoped to litter box train and have around the house. But when Enigma and his sisters needed a home, I knew they were the right fit for me. Being a giant breed of rabbit makes them great for snuggling. They are docile and do well in our long, cold winters. I chose to bring Enigma today because he often has the same facial expression as the rabbit I found in this book, Small Pets and Pet Care, a nonfiction book by David Adderton. In the 639 section of the library, we'll help you find out more about pets and pet care. When I read Small Pets and Pet Care about the Flemish giant Rex breed, I learned that one look. I learned that Enigma actually looked like a New Zealand rabbit, and that the Flemish giant breeds were better known for their steel gray color. If you look in the book, that is the rabbit that I thought looked a lot like Enigma. Do you agree? Flemish giant breeds are actually better known for their steel gray color. Enigma and his sisters are truly enigmas because all three are pure white and with pink eyes. No matter how much I get the dirt on things, I'm always finding out more. This book I found really helpful at our library. It's called Rabbit Breeds by Lynn M. Stone. If you look under the Flemish Giant section, at the top of the page there's, list, there's like different things about the breed. Flemish Giants. They are originally found in Belgium. They weigh around 14 pounds. And they come in black, blue, light gray, gray, and white. And then if you look back here, this is what a New Zealand rabbit looks like. Enigma is the smallest of three rabbit siblings we own, but being the male, that is typical for rabbits. My sister named Enigma after the Enigma machine because she likes codes. What's an Enigma machine? Get the dirt by going onto the library online catalog, type in Enigma machine, and see the great books they out there to read. The dictionary tells us that an Enigma is a person or thing that is mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. And it turns out Enigma was named well. When we got our three rabbits, we thought he was one of the female rabbits. But when he got older, we got more dirt and we found out he was the male. If you look in the dictionary, you can look under R for rabbits, R and find rabbits. The definition of rabbits is it's a noun. It's a small mammal with long ears, 
long back legs for running and, or jumping. Rabbits have soft fur and a short tail. There are herbivores with long front teeth. Being a herbivore means they eat grass and vegetables. They don't eat meat. Some kinds of rabbits make tunnels or burrows in the ground. Cottontails and hares are kinds of rabbits. Did you know that your love for pets and animals could lead you to a job in, or a career in pet care? Beatrix Potter loved animals. She drew and studied animals as a child and later in life put together the well-loved books about Peter Rabbit and his friends. I liked these little sized books because they fit into my hand perfect for carrying. Today I chose to choose to read this edition of Peter Rabbit because it is larger for the camera and is a great version for practicing read reading. The Tales of Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. One day, Mother told him to go out and play. She told him to have fun. She told him to be good. Flopsy want to pick berries. Mopsy want to pick berries. Cottontail want to pick berries. But not Peter. Mr. McGregor saw Peter. He was very, very mad. Peter saw Mr. McGregor. He was very, very scared. Peter ran and ran. He ran very, very fast. He ran so fast that he lost his shoe. A bird found one. But it did not fit her. Peter had to hide. He jumped into a can. It was a good place to hide. But it was full of water. It was a very, very small window. It was too small for Mr. McGregor. So Mr. McGregor gave up. So Peter began to cry. He wanted to go home. But he did not know how to get there. Peter saw Mr. McGregor. Behind Mr. McGregor was a gate. Behind the gate was the way home. Peter ran and ran, he ran all the way home. He lay down on the soft sand in his home, and Peter went to sleep. Then, the other book. See, this book is a double book. There's Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. Now, the second book is called The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. Bunny. Benjamin saw it go by. Then he slid down into the sand bank and hopped away. Benjamin saw Peter. Peter said hello. Benjamin said hello to Peter. Peter did not move. Peter did not look happy. Benjamin sat with Peter. He told him Mr. McGregor was not home. He told him Mr. McGregor was out for a ride. Peter hoped that it would rain on Mr. McGregor. Peter thought he might. Benjamin jumped into the garden. Peter fell into the garden. But the garden was so soft, Peter was okay. Peter put on his coat, put on his wet shoes. Benjamin gave, put on a great big hat. When Peter wanted to go, Benjamin did not. But Peter did not want to stay. He did not want to be stay in the garden. He did not want to think this is fun. So Peter went with Benjamin. He did not like it. Then Peter stopped. He could, would not move. He could not move. Peter saw a cat. So Peter wanted to go. Benjamin wanted to go. But the cat did not want to go. So they all stayed. He had come. Mr. Benjamin Bunny had come for a son. He had come for Peter. He jumped off the top of the wall and jumped down on top of the cat. Mrs. Rabbit was very happy to see Peter. She was happy to see his shoes and coat. She told Peter never to go there again. Peter never did. This book was called, it's a type of book, it's a We Both Read book. Can rabbits really do all these things found in this book? No. Rabbits don't behave like people. We call that personification. Rabbits don't wear clothes. We know that this is, so we know that this is a fiction book. For more books about Peter Rabbit and his friends full of rich language and adventures, be sure to get the dirt in the fiction section under P for Potter. Here are some nonfiction books about rabbits that I really like to use to get the dirt on rabbits. This one, it's a rabbit handbook. And it just tells you lots and lots of different things about rabbits, rabbit hutches. So if you ever are interested in rabbits, this is a good book to check out. It's by David Taylor. And it's found in the... It's under TAY 932. 63. 66. Sorry, I read the wrong number. Or this one, My Pet Rabbit by Jane... Burton. It's again under the 636. If you want to learn how to draw rabbits and other pets, get the dirt 
in the 743 section of your library. I'm going to read this book about Annie and Snowball and the Thankful Friends. It was almost time for Thanksgiving. Annie loved Thanksgiving. This year she wanted to have a big dinner in her new neighborhood. Henry, her cousin Henry lived next door and Annie knew that his family would come for dinner at her house. But who else could Annie and her dad invite? Annie didn't have any brothers or sisters. She didn't have a big family of her own. But there was a big table at her house. She wanted lots of people around it. Who could she invite for Thanksgiving? Annie counted the dining room chairs. She and her bunny Snowball went the door to next visit Henry. Henry was playing with cards with his big dog, Mudge. Mudge was winning cards because he was drooling on the cards. Henry didn't want drooly cards, so Mudge got to keep the drooly ones. Mudge had a lot of cards. Annie sat next to Henry. We have room for five more people for Thanksgiving dinner, she told Henry. Great, said Henry, but they don't know anyone else to invite. Hmm, said Henry. Henry always had good ideas about dogs. But he wasn't sure he had good ideas about dinners. Does your grandmother have any old friends? asked Henry. That's a great idea, said Annie. We can invite her two best friends. And what about the postman, Mr. Bell? said Henry. His family lives in Alaska. You're right, said Annie. Maybe he'd like to have dinner with us. And maybe Miss Chan, said Henry. Of course, said Annie. Miss Chan taught first grade at their school. She was from China. Her family was far away, too. Annie asked her dad if she could invite more people for Thanksgiving dinner. He said, sure. So she made out little cards. She gave two to her grandmother, one to Mr. Bell, and one to Miss Chan. The cards had sparkly orange glitter on them and pictures of fall leaves and many hearts. Please join us for Thanksgiving, the card said. Annie hoped everyone would. Thanksgiving Day, Annie was very excited. She dressed up in an orange corduroy jumper and orange tights and shiny brown shoes. I want to look like a pumpkin, Annie told her dad. Snowball looked pumpkin-y, too. She was wearing a sparkly orange bow. Annie set the table while her dad cooked the dinner. Annie brought out all of her favorite teapots and teacups. She made place cards and set them on little pine cones. She gathered fall leaves and a big basket for the table. It all looked beautiful. Then everyone arrived. Grandmother's first friends met Snowball and Mudge. Then Mr. Bell met Miss Chan. Everyone new met everyone old. They all sat down to eat. Annie said the blessing. We give thanks for good food and good family and good friends. We give thanks for snowy bunnies and drooly dogs. We give thanks for everything. Then her dad carved the turkey, and they all had a wonderful dinner. And just as they were finishing up, who walked through the front door? Aunt Sally, said Henry, Annie Henry. She was a surprise. She had gone all the way from California. And she had crackers and carrots in her pockets. Annie's dad pulled out the 11th chair to the table. I am thankful you haven't eaten everything, said Aunt Sally. Then they all had a second helping as Thanksgiving dinner started all over again. Thanks for watching Get the Dirt. Tomorrow on Get the Dirt, in our Digging Deeper segment, the theme of this summer's reading program, we will be getting the dirt on some special flying creatures. Then be sure to tune in next week for a pet from the reptile family. Have a great day and be sure to get the dirt at your local library and sign up for the summer reading program.